welcome to Claris Engage 2020. My name is Beth Morello, and this is Even Non-Developers Can Improve Business Efficiencies Using Claris FileMaker. If you are a new developer or considering purchasing FileMaker for your business, you're definitely in the right place. If you are a seasoned FileMaker developer, this might not be the right session for you because we will not be looking under the hood to see how things work. I am relatively new to FileMaker. I started using it as an end user in September of 2018, and I received my first admin access in May of 2019. While I've been solving business problems for many years, I only recently discovered FileMaker as the most efficient tool in my problem-solving arsenal. I live in the Chicagoland area with my husband, two daughters, and our Cocker Spaniel. I enjoy the great outdoors, curling up with a good book, and family movie nights all of which can be made just a little bit better when done near an open fire. When I say non-developer, let me set the stage for you here. My background is in education and business. Granted, about 25 years ago, I took one programming course in Fortran. Uh, in case you're sitting there wondering, gee, Fortran, I'm not familiar with that. There's a reason for that. It was pretty much a dead language back when I took the course. But the real value in learning that language is that it taught you to think logically, and it was a great baseline for moving to additional programming languages. So in September of 2018, I was hired by a facility maintenance company. They're a small company with less than 10 employees. And the company was about six years old, and had been holding steady for a few years of revenue right around that five, six million dollars. Their 2019 gross revenue saw a 30% increase in revenue, and their goal for 2020 is to increase another 40%. If they're able to achieve this goal, they're looking at more than doubling their revenue in two years' time. Unfortunately, with the way the company is structured, for each additional block of revenue that they brought in, they had to add another operations team member in order to complete all of the work that was needed. So even though they are growing, they're not growing the right way. So I was hired to help streamline their business processes and make the company more efficient, which of course means making them more profitable. This company had purchased FileMaker Pro that spring and their developer had pushed out some basic functionality to the team just before I started. These basics included customers, customer sites, contractors, staff, and single work orders. Each module had a detail view and list view, but there wasn't really anything fancy in the functionality. It didn't make any of our processes easier. Basically, it just replaced our spreadsheets with a new and prettier way to look at the same information. There were hopes that I could help with this integration, but my primary goal at that time was to handle processing the snow work orders and invoicing for one of our largest customers. This was conducted entirely in spreadsheets multiple large spreadsheets that had to calculate a lot of data, and it meant spending a lot of my time watching the little wheel spin while the sheets calculated, and then recalculated, and then re-recalculated. We'll talk more about those spreadsheets in a minute. After surviving the snow season with those monstrous spreadsheets, I was first granted full admin access to the FileMaker system in May of 2019. I had big dreams for how our developer could upgrade our system before September, when I had to go back to preparing for the next snow season. I had a type-drawn vision of a dashboard that could be tailored based on permission levels, and I had four module builds that we wanted to add, invoicing, bidding, periodic work orders, and a call log. I was planning to work with our developer to have him create these modules while I would just do a few minor tweaks to the system, since I still didn't know much about the development side of FileMaker. Armed with only a few FileMaker App Academy training videos I had seen online, I started playing with the little things. For instance, I color-coded our system, as it felt a little haphazard. So I changed pages related to customers to shades of blue, those related to contractors to shades of orange, and those related to staff to red, that type of thing. Then I branched into things like conditional formatting, so that we could flag work orders on our list view that didn't yet have a contractor assigned, or ones that were approaching or had exceeded their target start or completion dates. All very minor development things, but things that were really helpful to the team when scanning through their list of active work orders so that things didn't get missed. As time went by that summer, I did not feel that enough ground was being covered by the developer, and I feared that the dashboard and the four modules we needed to have done by September were not going to be done in time. So while I looked for a new developer either to aid the one that we had or replace the one that we had, I decided to take on one of the builds on my own, and I went after the snow call log. Well, the previous year, the call log had been managed in none other than a spreadsheet, uh, and a spreadsheet that was shared across all of the staff. 
There's no easy way to see if a contractor didn't report in within the time frame that was needed. Handing off from one person to another, when a call came in at 7 in the morning and then at 8 o'clock somebody else is going to be dealing with it, it was really easy to miss follow up on an issue. And there's no way to do a season close report to see if we had issues with a particular contractor that might need to be addressed before the next season. So all of these things are things that a relational database like FileMaker <laughs> makes easier. So I decided to try my hand at creating that call log module on my own. Again, my background is not that of a developer. However, building that first module was all it took to get me hooked on FileMaker. It was so easy, and the solution, the solution to almost all of our redundancies and inefficiencies can be found with things within FileMaker. Uh, my build wasn't perfect, certainly not at all, uh, and eventually I had to have our new developer help me troubleshoot a few issues and help build some of the flags and alerts that we needed for the module. But I was addicted to FileMaker. I took our original dashboard. I used my sketch. And I turned it into an interactive reality. From there, I created our periodic contract module, which would later drive the periodic work orders. I started building the invoicing modules. And all of this was done in a matter of about three months. And keep in mind, FileMaker wasn't my only responsibility in this role, so this was not full-time effort on my part. Now, less than a year later, I am solving similar redundancy and inefficiency problems for an education company, starting with a build from the ground up that I'm doing myself. Many startups and or small businesses don't have capital to invest in a client relationship manager, or CRM, or in any other specialized software to run their business. They start on the free and the cheap, which means most start using Excel. I've worked for several startups and small businesses, and I've seen this time and again. They have a spreadsheet for everything, for customers, potential customers, vendors, marketing efforts, billing, tasks to complete that are sorted by quarter or region or type of task, that type of thing. Then they are using other tools on the free and the cheap, like MailChimp for marketing mailings, or various social media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Hootsuite. Uh, for accounting, they've got their QuickBooks Online, or they've got client-specific sites and apps for specialized vendor portals. They've got WordPress for their website and so many other type, similar type options. You've got to move the small business away from their spreadsheet models to reduce the redundancy of placing the same information from those spreadsheets into all of those apps and sites that they use. And then, of course, the nightmare of trying to keep all of this information updated over time. And make sure that the information from everything is available at your fingertips on a dashboard that helps you manage it all. There are three key tenets to making this happen. Move away from spreadsheets, connect your silos of information, and keep that information at your fingertips. I've put together just a few examples of how I applied these three tenets to a maintenance company. Tenant number one, move away from spreadsheets. FileMaker's low-code options make this easy for even new and non-developers like me. First, I created a call log specifically for snow calls, tracking snow events, individual site issues, and then the calls that relate to each of those issues. As I mentioned previously, they originally tracked these issues and calls in a spreadsheet. And afterwards, they could track individual events, an isolated storm in a state, uh, or a storm that moves across the country, or maybe just a block of dates. With only one event actively taking issues or calls at a time, they can easily track how many issues relate to that storm, how many calls are involved, and how many issues are still open and unresolved at the time of handing off the phones from one person to another. Each individual storm can have issues from multiple locations shown here on the issue list. And each issue can require multiple calls to resolve, as shown here on the issue details and on the call log. These issues can be reported by the customer, contractor, or initiated by us, and different follow-up is required depending on how the issue is reported. Anytime unsatisfactory work is reported by the customer, we need to be able to follow up to resolve. The unsatisfactory is reported with the red I, uh, issue icon here on the right side of the issue list. And then once we've resolved that issue, the green star is added to it. Finally, whenever a slip and fall is reported at the site, we need to track that work order and various other details and documentation surrounding that event and issue. We'll be referring to that event for several months going forward. So there's a flag here to highlight this issue. It's shown with the little slip icon here at the bottom of the uh, issue list. 
Second, I created a way to flag your action items in a customer, contractor, or work order as requiring follow-up and placing those items on the dashboard. Merely place a follow-up date in the action item, and the item immediately shows up on the dashboard. There are color codes on the text for the due date and person that owns the item that indicates something is either in the future, it's due today, or it's past due. Uh, all the items in the example here are bold red, which is showing past due. The button there opens a popover that shows all the action item details without needing to open the customer contractor or work order page, but it also contains a link to go to those pages if needed. Finally, tracking invoices to customers and bills from contractors was a major ordeal with regular errors and headaches. There was a spreadsheet that contained approximately 10,000 rows of data for every year. Paper was used and lost as it passed through the various stages. The original process looked a little bit like this. Person number one takes the paper bill from a contractor, confirms pricing with the work order and FileMaker, then hand writes the details of that work order onto the bill. Things like a description of the services for QuickBooks, the contractor rate, the customer rate, the work order number. Types those same details into the tracking spreadsheet and then places the paper bill in the accounting bin. Person number two reviews the details on the sheet and in the system, creates an invoice in QuickBooks, saves the invoice to our records, and hands the paper bill off to a third person. The third person reviews the details on the paper bill and the saved invoice, confirms the original details match on this sheet, and adds the invoice details to the tracking spreadsheet. Once confirmed, this person scans the bill into the contractor folder and places it in the filing bin. Depending upon the customer, the invoice submission process would vary. It could be a fourth person or a repeat of one of the above. The problem is that each time the paper was handed off, there was the risk of it going missing. Each person had ran the risk of making a typo or a mistake somewhere, and it needed to go back a step or back two steps for clarification. And then, of course, that increased the risk of the paper going missing. My build, it allowed the details from the work order to auto-create the invoice with all of the information from step one retained with a hard copy of the bill in a single click. It allowed for all of the following as well. The security of multiple eyes on things each step of the way. No one person could sign off on two steps in a row and push something through without another staff member reviewing it as well. It also showed exactly how many invoices were in each step of the process right on the dashboard without anything being lost, misplaced, or forgotten until a due date had passed. It removed the redundancy and all the potential errors of taking the information from the work order to three places, the paper copy, the spreadsheet, and QuickBooks. I designed and built the invoicing module prior to Claris Connect's release. Therefore, my build did not yet connect to QuickBooks, but it was our plan to complete that part of the process in the next phase of the project. Tenant number two, connect silos of information. There are two goals when connecting your information. The first is to make sure you are keeping all of your information in one place, FileMaker. Yes, you may use other apps or sites, but you can keep everything connected and only need to update the information in that one place and then push from there to everywhere else. And second, that you are simplifying the process for the end user. This first example accomplishes both goals, keeping things together and simplifying a process. The original staff record only tracked a portion of the information that a manager needed to track. I did a small tweak and changed the record to a master detail layout. What you can't see with the details blurred out is that employees are sorted first by their active status, then by last name. Inactive staff members are moved to the bottom of the list and use conditional formatting to turn them dark red. Also, part-time employees are highlighted in yellow to distinguish them from the full-time. Additional slides were used to add room for all the other information that we wanted to track about employees, the employment documents, the paid time off, the timesheets for part-timers, etc. These changes allowed for the elimination of hard copy employment paperwork, kept track of the paid time off in a single location, and could allow for auto timesheet submission, both to the approval manager and to payroll services. This second example is that of a simplified process. Before we can work with a new contractor, we need to have a signed master agreement. The original system had a container field in which to place the signed agreement, 
but the document needed to be generated, sent, signed, returned, countersigned, scanned, and uploaded, all done outside of the system, first. Therefore, I created the master agreement as a form and wrote a script to simplify most of the process. The operations team could now create the master agreement, save it as a PDF on their desktop, email it to the contractor, and insert a copy of that blank PDF into the contractor's record with a single click. They would still need to attach the countersigned document upon receipt from the contractor, but this saved a lot of steps. I have found that end users need to see the value in change. If you are merely swapping out their spreadsheets for a database that has the exact same functionality, you miss the boat. As I mentioned before, this is exactly what our first developer accomplished with his initial release. However, if what you're doing is making their job easier and allowing them to skip steps or complete multiple steps with a single action or click, they'll get there fast. This master agreement form made a big impact on the end user's time and features like this one are the ones that got the team excited about using this new platform. Finally, my last two examples both accomplish both goals, keeping things together and simplifying a process. We built two APIs into our system this year to increase office efficiency and company profitability. One with Service Channel and the other with Google Forms. Both of these were primarily to assist with those snow, snow work orders that I mentioned at the beginning of the session. We also had the added benefit of the Service Channel API pulling all work orders into our system, not just those related to snow. Originally, in order for me to process snow work orders, I had to export a set of emails from Outlook, then copy and paste the information from the export into a second sheet to calculate and process, then copy those calculations from that spreadsheet into a third spreadsheet, which then did more calculations. This process alone was just gathering the information into the spreadsheet. It took a minimum of 15 minutes each time it was done, and during the snow season, we usually pulled information a few times a week. It was also a task that was only completed by a single staff member, so any information needed was on hold if that member was not there to pull the data. After the Service Channel API connection was built, there was no longer any human interaction needed to pull those work orders into our system. There was a server-side script that ran every hour to pull in that info, and that info was at our fingertips whenever anyone needed it. The API build for the Google form allowed us to have our contractors submit to us via the form services that were missed. Then a server-side script ran every morning to pull in that information into FileMaker, as opposed to the previous year when I had to hand type in all of the missed service information myself. To give you an idea of the amount of time we're talking about here, we usually had over 2,000 lines of missed services each snow season. Finally, we have several other future steps on tap to continue the process, which include using Claris Connect to connect in MailChimp for marketing campaigns and QuickBooks connections and others. I will admit that the API build is something that is beyond that of a new or non-developer, as it is not a low-code option. However, Claris Connect, which was released after these things were built for us, is adding new apps and options all the time and is perfect for those needing the low-code connection option. Tenant number three, keep information at your fingertips. If you have a system full of information, but no one knows how to find the information, nor is there a way to send or manage alerts in the system, the information isn't very useful. All information needs to be readily available and easily accessible. Early on, I created a navigation panel and made a modification to all of our module's detailed views to aid in this process. This, in addition to the interactive dashboard I showed earlier, made a big difference in the accessibility to the end user. We needed to be able to access whatever information we needed from wherever we were. That meant that we didn't want to always go back to the dashboard in order to leave one module and get into another. Our original system allowed you to switch from the list view to detail view within that module or go to the dashboard. There were no other options. Therefore, I created a navigational panel. I designed, created, and pushed this panel out within my first 30 days of having admin access in FileMaker. With time and experience, and a little nudge from the developer who was training me, I came back and switched it from its original format of a popover button into the card window that you see here. Using a popover meant that any time I made a change to the button options, I had to make that same change on every layout. 
for which we had well over 200. Whereas using the card window meant I could change the one location and it auto-populated everywhere. As you see here, there are more options than the 10 you can see. If you select something with more options, those additional options become visible when the button is active. For instance, call log allows you to go to the event, issue, or calls. And work orders allows you to go to the single work order details or list view or periodic contract details or list view. Whereas dashboard will just take you to the dashboard. The navigation panel was a great first step. But beyond that, the team needed to be able to see information from more than one direction. For instance, if you're looking at a contractor and wondering about their performance during snow season, you don't want to have to leave their contractor record to go into the call log to look up the contractor over there. You want to be able to see that information from the contractor lens. However, here in our original system, there was limited screen real estate. So I made a few modifications to all of our modules by adding in slides. As you can see here on our contractors, I added in the navigation buttons on the left and added in slides to the right panel, thus opening it up to a lot more room so that you can look at all the contractor information from within the contractor. The documents page had a bit of an overhaul too. We needed a place to store additional documents and include space for the master agreement form I mentioned before. I did this with all of our modules, but we'll only show this one last one here with our customer module. This new design allows for further growth beyond what you can see here, as additional slides and buttons can be added when needed. Finally, and most importantly, the dashboard. I briefly showed the interactive dashboard I designed earlier. This here, our original dashboard, was merely a list of buttons to take us into each module's list view. Now, we have an interactive dashboard. I took my hand-drawn vision of a dashboard, chatted with the developer that was training me, looking for some advice, and I tackled this piece too. There are overall color codes for each module, but within that, I use traffic light colors for warnings. Yellow for when something needs your attention soon, due this week or expiring this month, or red when something needs your attention now, due today or past due, missing documentation, etc. Individual staff members will only see their work orders and counts for each category, which were calculated using Execute SQL, and can go straight to any list that has items flagged. Managers have the white arrows on the right of each work order category to open a popover to get further details. Which staff member has how many of each type of work orders, and each button goes to the list view needed. You just saw only a few of the ways that I applied these three tenants to a maintenance company and had phenomenal results in a short period of time. Now I'm taking these three tenants and applying it to my new project. Several years ago, I worked for an education company that prepared students for their college and graduate school entrance exams. And while I did streamline a lot of their processes in multiple regions, I did so using those dreaded spreadsheets again because free and cheap. Now I'm using my new favorite tool, FileMaker and I'm going back and building them a new system. Just over two years ago, I had never heard of FileMaker, and if you had told me that by the year 2020 I'd consider myself a developer, I would have laughed in your face and thought you had me confused with someone else. But herein lies the beauty of FileMaker's low-code design. You don't have to be a developer to be a developer. So I guess only one question remains. Are you ready to improve your business's efficiency?